I'm blowing the dust off of the cover of this Unearthed Arcana. Oh, I no! I was gonna do something like that. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna say, our oh, guys have been digging in the garden, and I found this. I found this Arcana. I think. Oh, oh you wanna? <laughs> did, did I found you this Arcana it? in the yeah. garden. I was doing some weeding. <laughs> This your car is covered in mud. Give me a one of it. Just comes out the ground. Um, I guess we're starting. We're going to be talking about the new, it's shiny and chrome, Anath Arcana Wizard, the Order of the Scribes uh, from the Anath Arcana that came out uh, a few, a little, uh, a week ago or so. By the time, uh, a few days ago, and I'll be drawing it. I'm Theo. Uh, I'm Neil. And I'm Sam. You know what? I think this is this is like the most concise intro ever that we've done for this show. Good job, guys. I decided to draw on Drew because I realised that uh, it's about it's nearly halfway through this year, and I haven't drawn a single thing that uh, isn't completely obviously fantasy. Ah. Uh, and I've only drawn like two things that weren't directly D and D related, um, which is all well and good. But sometimes you want to do something else. So I am drawing something that is uh, sort of. Modern fantasy. You, you can see already there's a tape deck boombox. I love it. And this is something that I, I've talked about, I think, in, uh, with you guys occasionally, which is the idea of having a wizard whose spell book is like a load of cassettes, nice. and they have like a, a catalyst of like a, a speaker that they put them in. I think you've played and that Warforged. I have played that uh, briefly at one point. Yeah, so that that that's what I'm drawing. That's why it's going to be the way it is. Uh, it's it's tangentially re- related to what we going to be talking about, but this is just me wanting to draw something a bit different for once. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about Order of the Scribes. Yeah, immediately, Order of the Scribes, right? The first mm. sentence is utterly bonkers. Magic of the book! That's what many spellcasters call wizardry. <laughs> <laughs> the name is apt, given how much time wizards spent poring over their spellbooks. <laughs> yes, uh, it is actually a fair point, because like... If you <laughs> wizards like a really complicated class in yeah. the base book, you need, a, you need a big game of brain. There's a lot of writing, like mm-hmm. explaining, because there's a lot of finishing stuff, like copying down spells and making scrolls. And there's the whole bit in the DMG about yeah. what, like, making scrolls about. And all basically what it boils down to is there's not a whole lot of point to making scrolls it and takes stuff so like long. that. It takes so long, and it's and it it's not it's not worth it. Mm. They haven't done as many uh, new wizards. As they have done for all the other classes, if, if only because there's so many wizards in the base uh, player handbook, but also just because I, I think they covered a lot with those those original wizards because there's one for every class of of magic, there's every school of magic. Mm. So I think this is the first one. Apart, we really we really like the wizards from the uh, uh, Explorers Guide to, to well, Wildmount. Yeah, and they were very cool because because they were again they were bringing something very different. So and this again I think is actually it earns its place as being. Uh, unique, so I, I, I'm I'm looking forward to having a chat about it because I think it's very cool. Yeah, so this is basically yeah. wizards are normally nerds. This class is the super nerd wizard. Usually, a wizard is a specialist in a school. This is a wizard who's specialising in being a wizard. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Yeah. I mean, as we go into it, he he rather explicitly kind of jumps between them. So the the main thing from like the flavour at the beginning that you should know is that the this is kind of really focusing on your. Sp- Spellbook being a big part of your class. Obviously, I think spellbook's a massive part of any wizard. This has the explicit thing where it says, like, your spellbook becomes like a sentient or semi sentient companion to you, which is kind of like, whoa, it's kind of out there already. It's like, it's like Map from Dora the Explorer. Exactly. Or and when uh, I was. Grimoire from uh, Nier. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a, now that's a pull. <laughs> I mentioned this to my brother. You remember back when they did that bard who had the the magic notes floating about, yes. and it was kind of Fantasia-esque. Yeah. Right? This is that, but I think done better. Like, this is a similar st- like flavour, like style, and I think this is a, a better representation of that. You get your, your first thing at second level, as all wizards do. You get, <laughs> you get your wizardly quill. Uh, you can, <laughs> as a bonus action, you can summon a magic quill that doesn't require ink, and it writes in whatever color you want. And you can erase whatever it writes by f- brushing the feather of the quill on it. Mm. And this is the important. Uh, and this is the important point of it is when you use your quill to copy a spell into your spell book, the costs are halved because usually That's if you're not so familiar good. with wizard, yeah, there's a the, the, there's a cost for you writing rolling. down your spells because you have to. Spend money on expensive yeah. ink and you need, paper. You need, you need really expensive ink. 
It's like many hundreds of gold. And yeah. each wizard subclass uh, has their own school cheaper. Like mm. necromancy makes necromancy, you know. Uh, Spell uh, cheaper, yeah, yeah. Yeah, abjuration. But this is just all of them. Which is crazy. Really, really cool. And it makes a lot of sense. You know, you're, you're, this is the... Is, is it called all of the scribes? I think this used to be an archivist for the artificer originally. Again, these are the revisited ones. So these yeah. are updated versions. We didn't mention that at the beginning. It's my bad. I've also noticed some abilities in here from the old Wizard of Law. Yes, yes. That, that, that is in there as well, which I think is yeah. very good. Uh, so that's cool. You get Magic Quill. Uh, obviously, what I've drawn doesn't necessarily... It's not highly present. Uh, you know, the one I'm drawing is obviously they're a music nerd. They've got a bunch of cassette, cassette tapes. They're not they're not a bard because bards think have fun casting spells. This person's very concerned about the the specifics and the the nerdy side of music, not the not the fun charismatic side of music. Yeah, the the thing that is not known, the thing that is really clear is that this year, the year this is set in is 2006. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, 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 so okay, being it's, like this is really not cool. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. I was gonna. I know it's. I know like comparing people's art to like other things isn't always the best thing to do. But no, with the big boombox cool. and like the big speaker and the headphones, this is like giving me super jet set radio vibes. And I just thought I'd let I'm, you know that I'm. I'm very happy for that comparison to be made. Yes. That's, that's fine with me. But yeah, so the the, the, the other thing you get, I don't, I'm not really very familiar with wizard. Do, do you, Neil? Do you know if you get usually you get two things at uh, second? Yes, level totally. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, the second thing you get is you get your awakened spellbook, and they kind of hinted at this in the the flavor. Flavor. Your spellbook uh, gets a it, 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 it has an awakened an arcane sentience within your spellbook. It doesn't really explicitly say anywhere in here, as far as I'm aware, that your spellbook is like a sentient. Like you, it says that these wizards talk to their spellbooks. It doesn't say that they talk back. I yeah, I think it's very <laughs> much implied. It's like they're moody. And I, and I think you could really, depending on how the the style of the campaign is and what kind of character you're playing, I think you could really go really all in and having it be like a like a familiar you could have it be something that you talk to and the dm like talks as regularly or it could be something that you talk at and it responds you know however you a little bit i think there's a lot of room for customization there which is good uh, so yeah so, so the things you get from this awakened spellbook benefits are you can use your, your book as a spell casting focus i didn't know that you couldn't do that before <laughs> i kind of always assumed you could so that's a really that's a really good little bit. That is good. So the second thing you get from your Wiccan spellbook, when you are, oh, this is the, this is my favorite thing from this class. And I think it's, it's pretty cool. It, it, it makes the class, I think yeah. for me, when you cast a spell with a spell slot, so not a cantrip and not using like some weird rules, you can change the damage type to any other damage type. So long as you have a spell of that type. This this is the thing from the the old, uh, but, uh lore. wizard of law. Yeah. The wizard of law could also change its save. That's oh. crazy. That's yeah. that might be too much. You could, um, but you I could have a force fireball that dodges with with charisma. <laughs> or like constitution <laughs> awesome. or something. Yeah. That's so silly. Well this is really, really awesome because what this finally means is you can be really thematic with a certain like elemental adept to the feature, like if you if you're using feats in your campaign, obviously be an excellent choice um to 100%. just take and then and then turn everything into, you know, fire, lightning, force or, or, or any any damage type of your choice. And you don't have, and that's the thing, like, you're special, you can be specializing, but you don't have to with it. Like, you could, just because you want to, always make your spells use thunder damage or lightning damage or whatever. But there's, it's not actually forcing you down that road. It's just that that would be purely a, a personal choice. It's just an option. I'm playing a wind themed character at the moment, and mm-hmm. being able to swap any spell to thunder would be amazing. Yeah. It'd be very cool. I mean, just think about you know uh, changing a th- uh, fireball to lightning or thunder. Thunderball. Thun- yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. it could be so good. Changing it to lightning and calling it down from the sky. Well, what I've what I've got in the drawing uh, here, there's uh, the, the, this this character I've drawn there. Uh, they're, they're doing a, a lightning bolt, but fire. So a big long pew, straight line of fire. Love it. Uh, I think that's a that's a cool one. That is. A good and, one. and 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 when you when you see that, you just. You just get out the spell list and look through them and look at what spells do what and like changing stuff up because it's like finger of death, which is like a really powerful good spell, but it's like 
It's like necrotic damage as necromancy spells. Like ah, I don't. It's a really awesome spell, but then also like, do I really want to be doesn't using that as this character? Doesn't, mm. doesn't doesn't feel right. But then you can turn it to be like a, a lightning poke and like a big storm hand comes out, and, and, and that can be really cool. And also, there's like no ice spells. There's no cold damage spells. Yeah, when I tried to when, like, when I tried to do the a, like, <laughs> I did a frost character in a one shot, and it was very hard to get. He <laughs> does like yeah, yeah. snowball storm. Snowball yeah. storm is yeah, 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 yeah. great. <laughs> But it's it's just like it, it just gives you that option to, to really specialise and be really really thematic, which is great. Yeah, yeah, really cool, really really cool ability. And what I quite like about uh, this in principle is that you're only second level. Yes. So uh, it's immediately kind of same with your class, and I think that your art's doing a good job of showing how you play this as a young character, because rather inherently mm. to like the old wizard of law was that they've been at this a long time. That's the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The elements of this that like you're getting this ability not because of something you're doing, but because of maybe your arcane sentience in your book or something like that. It's all and it's also like experimental. So maybe yeah, you're the it, you're yeah. on the you're the new kid on the block who's yeah, like you, I would do things different. <laughs> I could do a fireball with thunder. <laughs> There's a oh, you can't stop me, old man. Or I want a poison ball. There's a way of playing it that is an I am a master of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And and the fact is, like, in 5th, there's not a lot of damage resistances. Obviously, monsters... The elemental resistances are more common, but there's not loads of them, so I don't think this is actually... It, it's not g- game-breaking at all. Like, no. it's... Let's be brutal about a couple of things. Sure. There are some spells in D&D that are not made as equal as others. Yes. 100% true. Yes. So the ability to, when you run into an enemy that is resistant to a fireball, to just have it not be fire is inherently incredibly powerful. Because fireball yeah, that, is not like is, any other spell. That is a, that yeah. is kind of crazy. And there's one more thing. <laughs> one, oh, yeah. Final thing for a Megan spellbook. Um, and this is a kind of... It, this is a more interesting one. It's, it's a little bit uh, less obviously useful, but it's still good. Uh, when you cast a spell... A wizard spell... That's the not, that's not thing about this subclass is a lot of writing that can be cut out because it like it's wordy. It's it's wordy as hell. But like if you look at the base wizard, my god. Anyway, <laughs> when you cast the spells of ritual, you you cast it with the normal casting time as opposed to adding ten minutes to it, and then you can only do that once per long rest. And that's obviously it's it's good. I think like what what are the usual like ritual uh, comprehend languages identify. Yeah, I think detect magic can be a ritual cast. I yes, think. it can. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Okay. So th- yeah. there's definitely a couple times where it's going to be pretty good. It- it's nothing out of this world, but it- it's it's cool. And it's again, basically ritual... a free spell. Yeah. What it, really so it, mean, it means yeah, it means, it means yeah. you can put it out when time is more you know important. Where it's not safe to not safe to. Don't worry, I'm just going to sit here for ten yeah. minutes in this you know this scary cave. So so that's cool, as you say. Yeah, it is basically a free spell. It's something that you're probably going to use every session and not think about just because there'll be a time when you go like. Oh, we're not short resting. We, I want to identify this thing, yeah, that we've just found in a room in a dungeon or whatever. I'm gonna do that. Nice, <laughs> like it, no worries. Especially at, and again, at second level, that's gonna be really useful because you've only got you know a couple spell slots, yeah, and you don't want to necessarily use one on something like that. So that's anyway, very handy uh, and pretty good. And then there's a little bit here about you can replace your book after a short rest if it gets destroyed. Yada yada yada. There's oh no, that's it's things. way better than that. Oh, is it? You can just write some sigils in a blank book, and the arcane consciousness transfers all of your old spells oh, into right, yeah, the yeah, new yeah. book. Because so, before you'd have to copy them all out and have the you'd gold have to have a spare spell. book. Yeah, you'd yeah, have to yeah. make your spell book before you lose it. With this one, you can just replace your spell book. Which is again, it's one of those things where like wizard. It's just like there's a lot, there's yeah. a lot of stuff. Yeah, like and, there's and literally it, like in the de- in the the player's handbook, there's a bit which is like you might, which is like yeah, you can like copy out all your spells into another book if you want in case you lose it. <laughs> and then every single spell has this cost, that, yeah. and it takes like this many hours to do, and it's like <laughs> again, wizards really, it feels. Uh, this is just about wizard now, like. There's a lot of stuff in 5th which is kind of going back on that save or die mentality from old editions. Mm. But, like, if you're a wizard and your spellbook gets, like, eaten by a dragon, then fuck you. You can't really <laughs> a new one. And, like, yeah. Enjoy your get, cantrips. Get stuff. <laughs> yeah, you still got those. But, like, it's really uh. interesting, but also, like... I can see why there's less of that in fifth, but also I like it when it does show up occasionally, uh, and that's like, and and, if, and I guess if any class is going to have like some classic old school, it'll be the wizard. Uh, it'd be wizard, yeah. Again, this is like supporting that idea that this is basically 
the wizard's wizard. This is the ultimate. This is the ultra. The wizard. every wizard's wizard. wizard. It's it's like all the goods. It's all the base wizard stuff, but like buffed up. Oh, he is, loves his cool. books. So yeah, sixth level master scrivener. This one can be really cut down in how to describe it. It's basically just that you get to make a first or second level spell scroll that counts as one level above. But they go into all this detail about how it's your spell you book can't... must be within five feet of you. And yeah, stuff it's, it's, it's a lot. bonkers. Again, I remember like ages and ages ago looking at how spell scrolls work because I really liked the idea of making a character who made like all their spells up in advance and only right. used scrolls. But it's just not really practical. But basically, don't you use your spell slot to make a scroll and then it only lasts until like a long rest or something? So it's basically you pre-cast a spell. It also takes time to do. And yeah, it, it's not practical. It's all the crafting rules for base D and D were kind of usable for incredibly weak things like health potions maybe. Still a yeah, bit yeah. more work than you'd probably be willing to put in. But things like actually making magic items yeah, it's so much in-game time that yeah. you won't have in the yeah. majority of games. It has in the majority of games, like in the campaign that I've been running I've been specifically trying to like have a lot of downtime. And even and in even... that game we've been doing stuff all That's the, the thing. Time, it's it's, it's only been like less than two months. I think it's a mechanic that like ninety nine percent of people never interact with. Like, yeah, I, I find that kind of. I mean, it, I guess it needs to be there. I guess it can be used as like a reference for if the party wants some like get an NPC yeah. to like commit like commission an NPC. I guess, but yeah, yeah. as players, like yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I don't see like being able to, some like the magic items like when it goes above common. Like, good god. You've got to do yeah, a lot like, of, oh, it takes like, a lot like, of time and a lot of things. And you need to be able to like cast the relevant day. spell. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a buff to that mechanic, essentially. You get to craft spells for uh, half the time and half yeah. the gold cost. And, and I guess, what is the benefit of making a spell scroll? Oh, people can use it, can't they? Somebody else can cast it. So, yeah. Someone else could cast it, yeah, I suppose it's true. I think handing out spell scrolls to other party members, like giving a yeah. revivify spell scroll to, you know, the fighter or something, or, or yeah, a, a mask yeah, your wounds. Okay. Giving, yeah. giving the... Because then it's their concentration, you know, like giving them a fly spell so that the fighter can fly on his own or haste. Sure, yeah, yeah. That's all really powerful and really useful, and... Yes, because then you can, you can have more those effects going around at the same time. That's probably worth it just for that. And, and I think the thing is, like, as with a lot of this stuff, like, if you're playing this class in a game where, like, a lot of time doesn't pass and stuff like that, this is an ability, if your DM is, is nice and reasonable, this is maybe more a roleplay ability that you would use to, like, hand stuff out, as you say, in a given to people in a defending the town kind of a scenario. Or This is one that's maybe... There's a lot of very strict ruling about it within the book, but also just saying that this is an improved thing maybe would encourage you to use it more in a sort of role play way as opposed to a you know by the book way. And I think that would be pretty reasonable. I, I still think it stands that this ability is not the best one out of the barrel. Very flavorful, and I like a buff to the feature. Nearly making it usable. You nearly making it usable. It's going to be one that your DM will, if you're, if it's if they're nice and good, uh, will let you get some use out of that is kind of beyond the strict ruling of it, I think. At least I would. And I'm a great DM, as we all know. You are a fantastic DM. Please don't I'm kill the character. Pre- pretty much perfect, <laughs> actually. Um, let's go to the end. Level 10. Manifest Mind. Uh, this one's kind of <laughs> kind of kooky, kind of cool, kind of crazy. Uh, certainly odd. Uh, so you're, you, know how you, you know how your spell book is, is, is sentient yes. and stuff? It's alive. Now it, now it can, like, someone a little manifestation of itself as a yeah. tiny construct that hovers around and <laughs> has a bunch of stats that are not super important. It has yours, but it uses your saves and your armor class, I'm pretty sure, basically. It could just be a <laughs> cascade of text. Yeah, again, it's very much like it could, it could it could be a floating book, or like a, a scroll, or it could be a, a guy. It and could be like, a tiny could... scholar from your past. <laughs> It could be literally anything. So, like, all right, sick. I mean, that's cool. I, I like that. It's, it's kind of crazy. It's a bit odd, but it is, it's cool. It's a bit of a boosted familiar. It, like, has dark vision, and you can look through its senses. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you can cast spells through it, but not just your touch spells. You can cast any spell as if you were in its place, I think is the wording. Which is pretty good. It. 
Which is pretty good. Again, like, you know, there's... Wiz has not got a lot of health, so the ability to maybe just throw a guy in there to cast a spell that would be risky for you to be uh, moving around in that range to, to as it were. Yeah. God, sentence, wasn't it? You kind of need to do it uh, <laughs> a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. Yeah, so that's coming back from the, the Phantom who had that proficiency bonus uh, as, their, as their resource. I think they're trying that out and seeing how that goes down. Oh, yeah, I'm a little weirded out. I, I don't like this one quite as much as I thought I would. Oh, yeah. The Again, it is, it is a boosted familiar uh-huh. with a few extra things. You know, it moves a bit further. It probably has more hit points than your rat. Um, <laughs> yeah, true. And it can yes. kind of make saves. But it it doesn't feel, the, it doesn't feel quite as um, impactful. Right. As I would maybe like the the object to be, it doesn't really seem to give me any benefit. Because yeah, I can cast my spells through it. What mm-hmm. realistically am I going to be casting through it under most circumstances? Because I'm going to be throwing the fireball anyway from 120 feet away. I'm going to be yeah. in. Enla- I'm going to be maybe hasting or enlarging from a distance anyway. Yeah, I, I guess the the fact that it's limited to like a certain amount of times is odd as well. Just because like I think things like I guess thunder wave. Uh, which mm. are obviously close, and there's a lot of good healing spells. Not necessarily wizards would have those, depending on what your class. That's what true. Your caster makeup is. Um, th- there are there and are there some are very good on touch spells. You know, like getting it to accompany the 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 investigating rogue. You know, things like witch bolt as well, which have like a minimum range that are of like thirty feet. Yeah, that's the odd thing. But the wizard at, at base is a ranged class. I, I know yeah, that sounds yeah. weird to say for D anD D, but it is a ranged <laughs> character usually. Yeah, you're not yeah. running into the fight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I don't really. Pl- I'm I'm pl- I've been playing a wizard, you know, with Yubi. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. been nowhere near the fight and casting all my spells. So I guess like the problem is like you 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 would say that the spells that you would like to cast for it are touch spells, which you can do anyway. Before yeah. this, yeah. yeah, that's fair. I think that's fair. Yeah, it's it's tankier. tankier. That is true. It's yeah, tankier. It's tankier. It might survive a hit. And the fact that it has to be within 60 feet of you as well, like, yeah, it can't even, like, go super far away. And then uh, I was thinking, like, with Lightning Bolt, it could go... Because Lightning Bolt relies heavily on positioning because it's a long straight line. So, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe having that movement would be useful for it. Uh, but, yeah, it's not... But then compare it to other things the wizards get. Right, right. And I know I'm playing a necromancer at the moment, and his thing is just he gets resistance to necrotic at this level. Uh, okay, so sure. yeah, it's maybe not mind blowing level for wizards really. Anyway, again, it's it's another fun little uh, role play thing, perhaps more than uh, super super useful. And you you will like to potentially just if if you're having fun like role playing with this class, you might just use it for fun. Like, yeah, I cast it from that. There's no yeah. limit to how long it can be out, just how long you can use the effect of it. Yeah. Yeah. So you can just always have your book, you know, accompanying you, jittering around, like, running around or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Again, this is... It, especially for, for one that I have drawn, I thought... I I've, I had a an idea that I thought was fun, of having it being a separate speaker. I like it a lot. For, my boom, yeah. for the boom box, but... Uh, I'm surprised you didn't uh, draw a cable. I was actually thinking about it. <laughs> I was thinking about having a cable that, like, fizzled out into magic and then, like, it came in again on the other side, but... Uh, I decided against it. So yeah, again, for maybe maybe for tenth level, this feels a bit like yeah. But again, comparing it to other things at that level for wizards, it's fine. It's it's it's, it's definitely it's, fine. It's, it's not cool. bad. I I'm I'm just a little I'm a little salty about it. That's all. And I think if you enjoy making characters and stuff, it's an opportunity to be creative with oh, how it manifests. A scholar from your past is so good. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then inherently from, saying yeah. that it could be your old wizard mentor who died, kind yeah, of like yeah. guiding over you, potentially maybe even kind of if he was Check. spirit was always in your spell book, being a bit of a you know look down yeah. upon. You're not keeping up with your homework, <laughs> kind of guy. No. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that could be fun. Final thing, fourteenth level, one with the word. This one is very odd. It's um, two things as well. It's also two things. Yes. <laughs> So you can swap between your manifest mind little ghost familiar. There's a couple things that from other classes. I feel like that that comes up every now and again. I didn't yeah. the root didn't the uh, the multi universe knight that Matt Mercer had yeah. have something like that. There's also another wizard that gets this at like level two, I think. Right, being able to swap. But so you can swap place with your uh, familiar thing, your manifest mind thing. Up to your proficiency bonus amount of times. Uh, so so that's probably good. That's another use for that. So that makes it 
you know a bit more useful. But again, at fourteenth level, you've got you got a lot of movement. Options. You got options as a wizard to be teleporting around. But you know that's there. That's one of the it's things. It's cool. It's cool. You can fly and teleport. Definitely. Yeah, <laughs> mm, that's true. Are you can fly up. Yeah. And the other thing you get, and this is the weird one. I love this. Um, I love this. It's one. very. I like it as well, just because it's. It's interacting with another mechanic. That's what it's good. Yeah. So you, if you die, but one spell remains in your book, you come back to life after a minute, within five feet of the book, and you have one HP, and then you lose spells. You lose three d six levels of spell. Oh, it's re- <laughs> and you can choose them and do the maths, a little calculation. Yeah. So how many? Like, gonna, so you're all three d six. So the average is going to be like nine. So. You can just throw away all of your first level spells. You could. You could be like, I don't need these anymore. It's 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 a weird, <laughs> it's a weird thing for sure. But yeah, so the <laughs> the spells disappear from your book, and I think you can never you get are them back. Incapable of, with wish, you are incapable of casting the lost spells, even if you find them on a scroll or in another spell book. So you die and come oh, back Lord. to life. Your book like sacrifices a bunch of spells. To get me back to life, and then it's like I'm not casting that ever again. And you can cast <laughs> that, wish that to get exist one anymore. spell back. Yeah, which is like <laughs> it's very weird, but also you know it's funny. It's kind of cool. It's I don't really different. know. It's very, it's different. very different, and which let, I appreciate. Let's remember as well, wish the spell that famously has mm. a chance to never be castable again. Yeah, is it like a twenty five percent chance or something? So, oh like god, that? I've sacrificed so many spells, but finally. I got my Melf's acid arrow back. <laughs> it was all worth it for Melf. I, guess. I love it though. It's so flavorful, like for burning up like the arcane energy. And, and, and I'm thinking, like, once you're at 14th level, like, there's a lot of spells. There's a lot of spells, and also you're gonna use this in a time of dire need. Yes. Yeah. And it's gonna be very dramatic. And, and like, and, and again, like, you kind of think about the the resources and the stuff that your character has. As if they're gonna be around and you're gonna be playing them forever. Yeah. Which isn't necessarily true. So the idea of like, I'm gonna lose all these spells, but in reality, once you're 14th level and above, how often, like, how many times are you actually gonna cast certain spells? Yes, definitely. Completely. Why why do you need to comprehend languages if you have tongues? Exactly. Mm. And, and if you are, like, at 14th level, hopefully, you have some heroic goal or, or even the fairest goal in mind. And if you're trying to further that goal, then and making sacrifice. a few sacrifices to like yeah. guarantee you come back, yep. I think that's fine. And again, once you're at this 14th level, if you have a cleric or a paladin or whatever, you can be brought back to life. So this is only going to be used if like like a TPK situation where like everyone's dead. What, what oh happens God. if it's a minute and you come back in, like with one HP and the big guys are sitting three. there like looting through your corpses? <laughs> and like, then oh, they kill like... you again and you have to sacrifice another nine spells. And then they kill you again and you have to sacrifice <laughs> another nine spells. I guess that's true. Yeah, there's, no with, natural... there's no limit to it. Yeah. So yeah, you just until you're like a your 14th level wizard with no spells. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's definitely cool, and I guess it kind of ties in with like the idea of wizards wanting to live forever, kind of thing. I now imagine the big bad does that and gets rid of all your spells, and on the final time just lets you go, and you're level fourteen yeah, like, and you can't yeah, cast any spells. They are nothing to me. You have to go get all the awful spells that you never bothered learning. Uh, <laughs> Whether <laughs> well, I've got to go find Earthbind. <laughs> Let's get him. I need Crater to show you what's up. ninth level. It's the only spell I have. The only spell I can cast is, is Mordekainen's Faithful Hound. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, think, I think it's a, a fair point to like... And, and that's what... I'd like to see more stuff like this, actually, in classes. Especially at super high levels. More stuff where it's like... Sacrificing potentially some effectiveness of your character to further a goal. It's I, so I, heroic. Because, like, again, it's, it's like... We've seen a couple of these now, actually, haven't we? Yeah. yeah, 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 and you're not going to be playing a character forever, and that's not a bad thing. <laughs> so having something that takes them away from them, but then it is dramatic, like that is really cool. I, I really, really like that. I think this might be, and there's a lot of wizards, so I'm not going to remember them more. <laughs> this might be one of my favourite wizards. I think that second level thing of being able to change up your damage type, and mm. so and, and then like this last thing, I think it, it makes the class like yeah for me at least. Yeah, like it, it's. To put it into context with the hit points thing, 
like Yubi sure. at like 14th level is going to have like 60 hit points. <laughs> yeah, so, so you're going to die. At 14th, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. A, a dragon will kill Yubi at some point. He'll yeah. fail you're going to get hit save. with something that does like 100 damage yeah. and you'll die. Yeah, or yeah. I just won't be at full. I'll be <laughs> at like 30 and then it yeah, will do yeah. enough to kill me. The, the spell, like, you know, Finger of Death and the Power of Death straight up kill something with less than 100 health. And like, that's the thing that happens. This also does it say, like, I guess this also protects the wizard from some spells that normally wizards are quite vulnerable to, like Disintegrate, which well, would get him point, to zero yeah. and turn him to dust, right? Mm, and so then he yeah, wouldn't yeah. be resurrectable. I'm not going to say this isn't a weird ability that sort of feels sort of so, kind of out of nowhere, at least on first re- reading, but it's... And the other burn it's... ability to, was another wizard. It was Chronogy. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to be the wizards that are getting these heroic sacrifice abilities. It's true. It's true. It's kind of cool. But I, I, I really, I, I like that idea behind that, and I, I, I would like to see more of that because it's, it's like with the paladin ones. Like when you're twentieth level, you get this mode. It's like, what if you could only use that mode once, but they were way better? Mm. What if you died afterwards? Yeah, it could be cool. Yeah. Again, perhaps not, not necessarily. I mean, the Paladin one is very underwhelming for 20th level. You're 20th level and you cause fear in like a 30 foot radius and you do like <laughs> extra damage. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like okay, fine. I mean, cool. he's turning into an earth elemental every round, so he has infinite yeah, well, points. Hey, hey dru- druid don't count. Druid is an accident. Druid's not meant to be like that. <laughs> okay. That was an accident. That okay, was monk lives forever. <laughs> monk lives <laughs> forever, so long as you don't hit him too hard. <laughs> So yeah, I think this is cool. A, a cool wizard. I know that the wizard that I've drawn isn't necessarily a D and D wizard as written. It's not even especially this particular wizard. But I would, I could have drawn an old man with a lot of books, <laughs> and that would have been fine. But I didn't want to. You can do whatever. I think with more, maybe even more so with any other wizard. But this wizard, you can do whatever. Yeah, this wizard is magic. Like, everything yeah. about him ties into wizard magic. That, like, in the same way that the Eloquence Bard was, like, everything Bard does but more, this is everything Wizard does again. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's Wizard Square. The very famous... Again, I mean, we, I, was, I personally was a bit mean about the, the, the familiar, but the most wizard spell is probably Find Familiar. Like, it's, familiar, it's yeah. Wizard 101 is, like, having your small animal look cast spells and looks them for you. And um, just to say another thing right about this class, uh, about wizards in, from Arata Arcana at the end, right yeah. at the end oh, of yeah, yeah, this yeah. thing, there's a little box that talks about uh, the art archivist, you know, his art artificer, but it also mentions that they're not going to be continuing to develop like the onomancy and uh, psionics yeah. in their development process because apparently it didn't appeal to enough people. So if you did like those classes, you should definitely fill in those surveys. Again, yeah, yeah, those surveys are a good thing. So again, yeah, uh, there will be in the description when there's the link to the uh, the PDF. There will also be a uh, the link that that'll take you there will be to the survey for the last one. I can't. That is the only issues you've got to like. I kind of wish the the survey came out at the same time. I feel like that would be mm. that makes sense, but I don't, I'm sure there's a reason why it doesn't do it that way. How do we these end these? We just say it's cool, right? Until we stop. Yeah, we keep saying it's cool, and then and then we get sidetracked, and then we start laughing a bit, and then we go, okay, it's time to stop. That's generally how it goes. We're going to be back with the wow. final thing for this Anatha Khan, the Warlock, the remastered. I think, was the Genie Warlock the first one we did of Anatha Khan? No, no, it was no, the, no, 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 no. It was the second lot, I think, was that. I think it was, it was, the, first it was the second lot of the ones we went really in depth. Yeah, because the early yeah, ones right. we, you did like the tokeny art. It's the first yeah, one, and we did two it? at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, whole, we did the, the Cyanox was the first one we did. Um, so yeah, we're going to revisit that genie, and we'll see how far we've come and how far the genie has come. <laughs> the genie gives with one hand, and he taketh with the other. He, t- he taketh with his big genie blue hand. God darn you, genie! Yeah, God damn you, Will Smith! Oh no! Come on, guys. That's more relevant than 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 the well, old one now. Is, all the ki- is all it? the kids? Yeah, surely not. No I, one's. Of course, that it, movie made a millions. But so did the Lion King movie, and no one on earth remembers that existed. To be fair, that's because that was just real lions doing the this. Is real lions hanging out? Anyway. This is the end of the video. We're not talking about Will Smith on this recording anymore. <laughs> 
uh, I'm, uh, thank you very much for watching. I will see you later. Good night. Goodbye.